This is not a hot take just because the Ravens beat the Bucks on Monday Night Football. This is not a take that even comes from just because the Ravens are doing well. You know what? Let me go ahead and say it now. Even though it does have a lot to do with the reason they are doing so well. But I've said it before and I'll say it again. Lamar Jackson is the best quarterback in the NFL. But not only the best quarterback in the NFL, but just the best player in the entire League team, keep it clean. I'm here to share my post game thoughts from the game that we watched and we love. We got a little stress at the end, we got stress at the beginning and then stress at the end. But the Baltimore Ravens they close it out. The Florida Ravens took over Tampa again. Shout out to everybody that went out to that game. I know y'all had a great time, but I'm here to share my post game thoughts on the game we all watched between the Baltimore Ravens and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Lamar Jackson, the very last pick of the first round in the 2018 draft versus Baker Mayfield, the very first pick uh, in the first round of the 2018 draft. And this was a pretty good game. Let's talk about the good first. And before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video because we love the ending of this game because it ended with the Baltimore Ravens getting a victory. But let's start off with the Baltimore Ravens offense. Offense early on, the very first drive, it was ugly. It was very, very ugly. Uh, because on the first drive, I think they tried Derrick Henry once. That ain't work. Lamar Jackson didn't get sacked once, but got sacked two times. Two times on the very first drive. And they were like, oh, Lamar Jackson has, I think they said, 84 starts in his career. And that's the very first time that he got sacked twice on the first drive, on the opening drive of a game in his career. And that's such an interesting stat. But it's a stat. Uh, and it's unfortunate that Lamar got that stat and the Baltimore Ravens got that stat but we're glad that that statistic did not stop them from just achieving greatness tonight once again so the Baltimore Ravens their offense they started off slow and we were all looking around like uh oh oh okay what's this gonna be but fear not because they ended up picking it up and Lamar Jackson he didn't throw one not two not three not four but he threw five touchdowns Five touchdowns. And the touchdowns were to Mark Andrews two times. So shout out to Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews was like, you know what? Being in the end zone was so nice. I'm going to get in there twice. Let's go. So shout out to Mark Andrews, who is looking like, oh, yeah, he's back. So Mark Andrews got in there twice. Justice Hill got in there once. And shout out to Justice Hill because Lamar Jackson had actually gotten a touchdown like the play before Justice Hill got it because Lamar Jackson, he ran it in. Ran in for a touchdown. We all jumping and screaming, ah, oh, let's go. But then the refs were like, hold up. Ravens, we don't want y'all to be running like that. Bring it back. Let's call a holding on Daniel Filele. I'm like, and with me, I'm like, all right, if it's going to be a holding call, I always say, let's see the replay. Let's look at the replay, see if it was like a legitimate call or not. It wasn't. It, it was a terrible call, but they brought it back. So it's like, okay, it is what it is. What did the Baltimore Ravens do? Lamar snapped the ball, throws a screen to Justice Hill. He takes it for a touchdown. New Money Justice continuing to do his thing this year. Shout out to him. The other touchdown uh, were to um, Derrick Henry. He caught one. Shout out to Derrick Henry. He is coming up on 100 rushing touchdowns. For his, he already got 100 touchdowns, but he's coming up on a rushing, 100 rushing touchdowns. I think he's at 98 right now. So over these next couple of games, I mean, they might as well just get it all this, this coming game against the Browns. But we'll talk about that later. Um, but then the, uh, the other touchdown was to Rashad Bateman. And speaking of Rashad Bateman, Lamar Jackson and Rashad Bateman's chemistry continues to ascend it continues to go through the roof it continues to take off it continues to get better and better every single week the thing with Rashad Bateman that was a big worry especially with Lamar Jackson how the Baltimore Ravens deploy Lamar Jackson as a quarterback and just simply as a weapon the big issue was the broken plays because that happens a lot of time when you don't have the best offensive line in the world when your receivers can't get open that quick a lot of broken plays end up happening so with Rashad Bateman, that's not really his forte. At least it wasn't before. But because we've seen time and time again, if there had been a broken play, Lamar might have to scramble around and whatnot, buy some time. With Rashad Bateman, he's never looking at him. And if he does, they just simply would not be on the same page. But tonight, oh, you saw it. 
you saw it. Lamar Jackson, he faced pressure, so he scrambled. He rolled out to the right and was running. He said, Bateman, go, go. And guess what? Bateman went and got it. And they connected for the big strike. But then Bateman said, you know what? No, no, no. Making a big play was so nice. I got to do it twice. And see, he like, Lamar Jackson, he hooked me up with the off script play. Now, let's do one of my specialties, the on script stuff. Rashad Bateman has said this week, he said, me and Zay Flowers, we always open for Lamar Jackson. And we're going to continue to always be open for Lamar Jackson. Bateman said, oh, I'm doubling down on that. I, I, I'm all the way in on what I said. I meant what I said, and he showed that he meant what he said because Bateman ended up getting open, and Lamar Jackson threw a beautiful strike to him. Touchdown. What was it, like a 51-yard touchdown or something? Like it was a beauty, beauty. Rashad ba this is the Rashad Bateman that we've been waiting on. This is it. This is it right here. And he ain't even in his final form yet. Rashad Bateman still got a ways to go. Lamar Jackson, he ain't even in his final form yet. Like Luke Keekley mentioned, like Lamar Jackson is entering his prime. He ain't at his best yet. He's like, he's, he's amazing, but th this is exactly why you bring in somebody like a Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry in this game, he started off a bit slow. There were some times when the Baltimore Ravens even forgot about Derrick Henry, he was looking like he was very upset. He was looking like he was just not happy. And you can understand why. He could be thinking like, hold up. Y'all brought me here for a reason. Like, let me contribute. I, I know I can make some plays for y'all too. Let's get it, man. I'm trying to. But Derrick Henry was not getting much of anything. And then there were some times when the Ravens, they started trying to feed Derrick Henry later on. And, and the refs were like, oh, no. You, you come back, Mr. Henry. You ain't getting that. Holding. And then another time they tried to feed Derrick Henry again. The refs, nope. Hold him. So I was like, man, what is going on? But the Ravens said, we got it. And they kept giving him, giving him opportunities. And boy, oh, man, he almost had a, what was it? It would have been a 94-yard touchdown. He almost got it. But he got caught. And it was, it was, it was okay, okay, that's cool, though. But Derrick Henry, he ended this game with 15 carries for 169 yards. 169 yards And you could think like Oh man Derrick Henry oh, man, He got Most of his yards Came on that big run I mean Which they did But even if You take away uh, 81 yards From 169 That still leaves you With 88 yards So he's still I mean Without that Big chunk play I mean You can't take it away from him But he still would have Had a decent game But that play made it Even better the only thing that would have made it better was it would be him getting into the end zone with a, a run. But shout out to Derrick Henry, man. This Ravens offense, I, I love it because, again, we've continued to talk about this. They can get it done in so many different ways. So many different ways. Lamar Jackson, obviously, but Derrick Henry, Justice Hill. Rashad Bateman, Zay Flowers, who got injured. He got hurt for a little bit. and we was, It was scary, but he came back. But he was pretty quiet. But um, Isaiah Likely, Mark Andrews, Charlie Kohler, who had a nice catch tonight. Isaiah Likely had a nice catch too. So Ravens could get it in so many different ways. They got so many different guys that could go off at any second. And that's what makes them so dangerous, man. That's what, and you still got Keaton Mitchell, who's on the way. You still got him on the way too. Speaking of Justice Hill real quick, let's talk about him. Justice Hill just continues to be amazing, continues to be reliable, continues to be Mr. Do-It-All. Obviously, he's a backup running back, but he's also, also a kick returner. Had a real nice kick returner night. Got the Ravens to like what? I think the 45-yard line. Justice Hill continues to do so much for this football team that it doesn't go unnoticed because we see it. We see that 43 making plays all the time. So he's definitely appreciated. We're glad that they re-signed him again. Justice Hill is on his third contract. With the Baltimore, well, technically he'll be on that third contract next season. But they signed him to his third contract with this team. He keeps being brought back for a reason. He's Mr. Reliable, and he just keeps getting better every single year. I remember with Justice Hill, I had high hopes for him when they first drafted him. He was the fastest running back in that draft. I said, oh, we got some speed. But it seemed like the Baltimore Ravens, they weren't quite sure how to use him yet. And could it have been a Greg Roman thing? Hey, maybe. Mm. But under Todd Munkin. Justice Hill has just gone to another level because last year was his best year ever. 
this year he's continuing. He's continuing to get even better. So maybe Greg Roman just didn't know how to correctly use him. And I know people go, oh, well, Greg Roman didn't know how to use a lot of people. But see, with that, let's go to Todd Monkin. Got to give him a shout out because 41 points, 41 points. I mean, I, I, my prediction was that this game was going to be 42 to 21 in favor of the Ravens. Um, and it was looking like it could have been, but then we talk about that in a little bit. But um, Todd Monkin has been, he's been amazing. He's been amazing. He had a few hiccups. He still got a few hiccups here and there, but he's been making a lot more plays happen than missing on calls. So he's been getting it. One thing that I will continue to say about Todd Monken that we noticed so much, and it's just made the Ravens offense evolve. They will use receivers and use routes to create separation, to create open just spots for receivers to be sitting it wide open. They'll use receivers to run off a safety, run off a corner. And we didn't do that before. The way that they use the screen game now, they are so good at it and so efficient. At it, they didn't do that before. The way that they use the entire field, sideline to sideline, not everybody just being cramped and bunched up all in the same spot. They don't do that anymore. That's what they did before. You was, before you would see so many receivers all right next to each other, all bunched up and what? They don't do that anymore. And we are so grateful for Todd Munkin and just how amazing Todd Munkin has been early on this season. We were thinking, All right, hey, this Ravens offense, when this season first started, I'm thinking, oh, this Ravens offense should be amazing. They should be great because they got so much continuity. Most of the same people that was on the offense, they're going to be back. Obviously, Lamar Jackson, Pat Ricard, Derrick Henry, he's going to have to get adjusted. In, but it's going to take him a little bit, but he'll get once he gets it, he'll get it. Rashad Bateman, Zay Flowers, Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, Charlie Cole. I'm like, a lot of these guys, they, they back. But the offense, they didn't they ain't really get the clicking early on. But they also didn't play in the preseason together. Could that have been it? Could be. But it's like once they get really got rolling, we saw glimpses of it even in the first game, even though they didn't play preseason. We saw even more glimpses of it in the second game, even though they didn't play preseason. But that third game, they, they, that's when they really got to rolling. And they've had moments where they've had hiccups here and there, but they really ain't stopped since. They really been on point since. Lamar Jackson in this game um, obviously was amazing. Uh, the decision making has been great. Um, just being decisive uh, has been great. Um, that, with Lamar Jackson just sitting back there in that pocket, oh, it's a thing of beauty, man. Lamar Jackson rolling out, it's another thing of beauty, man. And again, we talk about how Ravens offense, they got so many different players that can get it so many different ways. Lamar Jackson, he's a quarterback that can get it done so many different ways. In the pocket, out the pocket, scrambling. Buying time, taking off, he can do it all. There's not a single throw that Lamar Jackson cannot make. It's not a single one. He has great field vision. He has great pocket awareness. He, uh, he can do everything, man. That's why I say Lamar Jackson is not only the best quarterback in the league, but the best player, period. Now, let's talk about the bad. First, before we get to the defense, Lamar Jackson, <laughs> he ain't perfect. He certainly ain't perfect. Uh, and the turnover, that it was, it was on him because he threw a backwards pass. Zay Flowers tried to catch it one hand, but Zay Flowers couldn't get it. But Lamar Jackson threw a backwards pass. Zay Flowers tried to get it. He couldn't get it. Uh, and then the defender, he picked it up. And it looked like he scooped, scooped and scored. And I was like, man, really? He's really carrying these guys? He's carrying Isaiah Likely and Lamar Jackson all the way to the end zone? But thank goodness that Zay Flowers and Isaiah Likely, the two Zays, they had touched the defender down um, before he got up and started running with the ball. So I was like, oh, thank goodness. But let's talk about this defense. <sighs> defense, Ravens defense. Started the game off, um, Mike Evans wide open touchdown. Wide open touchdown. And that has been an issue with this defense, I think in just about every game. Um, this happens a lot with the running backs. Happens so much with the running backs to where they will motion. They'll either motion to the left or the right side either way. And the Ravens, would, they will just not pick them up. Then the quarterback will hit them in stride. Running back will get chunk plays on the Ravens. Deep. Every game. Every game. It happened a couple times this game. It happened definitely in the last game against the Comet. It happens so much and often. It's like, man, what is going on? It's such an issue. This defense is such an issue. The first, so they gave up those 10 points early on. Then 
They weren't giving up nothing. I think Ravens went on, what, a 34-0 run, something like that? So I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, Zach Oil, I see you, baby. Let's get it. And then it all fell apart. It all fell apart. You know, so you could say, oh, well, Marlon Humphrey, he, he ended up being out for the game. Marlon Humphrey was doing his thing, got two picks. Marlon Humphrey was like, hold up, Baker May. I know you. You look very familiar. I, okay, oh, I know what you like to do. Okay, I got it. Two interceptions. Then, unfortunately, on that second interception, he went down. He was out for the game. I think he'll be straight. Time will obviously tell because I mean, when they showed him walking, he wasn't limping or anything like that. He looked fine. So we'll see. Hopefully they're just being extra precautious and they just felt like, you know what? We got enough depth. They ain't got Mike Evans. So we should be straight. But um, so we'll see what's up with Marlon Humphrey. But um, the defense is just, my goodness, it was bad. And it has been overall this season. It has been, it's been bad. They've had some good moments, but it's been bad. Now, I, I said, I said, let's, let's see. I said, with Zach Orr being a brand-new defensive coordinator, let's give him six or seven games. I said that at the very beginning, before the season even started. I said, let's give him six or seven games to really judge him, to really see where he's at, to really see what type of defensive coordinator he is, to see what he struggles with, to see what his strengths are, to see who Zach Orr is as the Baltimore Ravens D.C. It hasn't been good. It, it hasn't been good. Now, we, of course, still rooting for Zach Orr. We, we, Zach Orr ain't going anywhere. I know people have been like, oh, get rid of Zach Orr, fire him. He ain't going anywhere. Baltimore Ravens are a very family-oriented organization. Uh, with Zach Orr having been an undrafted rookie free agent for the Baltimore Ravens. For Zach Orr going from undrafted rookie free agent to an all-pro linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens. For Zach Orr having that neck injury that the Baltimore Ravens found out about in good timing that it happened off the field instead of on the field where they found out about it. So he had to retire early. The Baltimore Ravens gave him an opportunity in the front office. The Baltimore Ravens gave him an opportunity with the coaching staff. The Baltimore Ravens gave him an opportunity as a linebacker's coach. He ended up going from linebacker's coach to defensive coordinator. So that was all from within Zach Orr. Literally started from the bottom bottom undrafted rookie free agent made the team and obviously I stuck with the team literally through everything and they stuck with him through everything Zach Orr is not going anywhere so we just got to hope that Zach Orr gets this thing right that's this it's the scheme Ravens got good personnel they got some good players but the scheme something about the scheme is just guys have been wide open it'd be one thing if like it, it, it was a personnel thing or if, if a player just couldn't match up with another player say for instance a wide receiver was one-on-one -on -one with a corner the wide receiver just end up uh out jumping the corner or stretching his arms out and making the play on the ball better than the ravens cornerback did that'd be that'd be one thing but it hasn't even been that it's been guys are wide open it'd be one thing if it was a running back matched up with a linebacker and, and a running back just made a better play than the linebacker but it hasn't been that it's been guys running wide open it's such an issue Guys are wide open. When Ravens run zone, it's, it's never pretty. It's not pretty. It, it, it's almost like they need to run man like every single play or something like that. But it's, something's got to give, man. It really does. Something's got to give. And I, I just, I don't know what the Ravens are going to do. I don't know what they can do. But it's, it has not been good. It hasn't been good. And we saw tendencies and things early on. But like I said, I said, we got to give it six, seven games. It's been seven games. So we, I feel like we know who Zach O is right now. Um, I know some people have been saying, oh, let's trade for a safety. Let's trade for a pass rusher. Again, I think it's scheme more than anything. Of course, one of those things could help, especially a pass rusher. Because our pass rusher in this game was, uh, was not getting the Baker Mayfield. It really wasn't. Um, pass rush in this game was just, it was absent. They got to him a couple of times, but it just it was absent. Um, so that's that's got to improve as well. And it's tough for the for the Baltimore Ravens. I know people say, "Oh, they've gone against these really good quarterbacks," which they have. Because they've gone against Baker Mayfield, who's been balling this year. They've gone against Patrick Mahomes. They've gone against Josh Allen. They've been going against um, uh, Dak Prescott. They've gone against Joe Burrow. They've gone against Jaden Daniels. So they were going and, and throwing Gardner Minshew in there too. Because he may not be the greatest quarterback, but for some reason, he turned it on against the Ravens. But still, the Baltimore, they, they got to get this thing right. Now, in this next week, you're going to be going up against whether it's Dorian Thompson Robinson or, or, or Jameis Winston. You're going to be going up against one of them. So you got an opportunity to give your defense a confidence boost. But still, man, the defense has just not. Mm -mm. Now, Roquan, he's been looking better now. He looked better this game overall. He did have a couple little moments here, but he looked better in this game overall. 
There was one play where um, it was him one-on-one with Baker Mayfield, and he made a great play. Baker Mayfield tried to shake him. Roquan Smith ain't bite on it. And this is the second week in a row that he's made a great play on a mobile quarterback. And it's just been him and the quarterback, and that's it. So shout out to Roquan Smith. Roquan Smith, he's been forced to fumble. He had like a million tackles this game. Um, but yeah, Roquan Smith was, he was doing his thing. He looks like he's getting better, a little more comfortable. Still, he's, Ravens still giving up some stuff across the middle of the field, but Roquan Smith is looking a little better every week. So we hope that that just continues. Um, but yeah, defense got to improve big time. Special teams. Justin Tucker, he's back. I mean, he's been back since, what, the Bengals game a couple weeks ago, but he's back. Hit from beyond 50 today. That's the Justin Tucker that we know. It was nice to see him. But, yeah, I mean, these Ravens, they, um, the offense has been saving, saving them. So they've been saving because defense, they ain't really been doing the offense too many favors at all. Um, once this defense finally catches up, not to say they're going to catch up all the way to the offense because that's like, Kind of an unrealistic, unrealistic expectation. But once this defense does start being better than Ravens, oh, my goodness. They, they're already a really good team. But they, once this defense starts doing their thing, they can be so much better and so much more dominant from start to finish. They started this game off slow, down double digits, and they came back. Remember remember that when that was a the thing? They said, oh, Lamar Jackson, he can't come back when he's down double digits. Yeah, again. But. Offense started slow, but then they came back. They went on a tear, but then the defense was like, oh, you know what? Let's give up everything, and they gave up everything. Even the onside kicks, man. It's like, really, the onside kick? We giving up the onside kicks, too? Two of them? Like, really? Come on now. What are we doing? What's going on? And Zay Flowers, like, Zay Flowers, what's, what's up with you on onside kicks? Like, he did get the last one. So, okay, cool. shout out to him. But what are we doing? What's happening there? So, anyway, but it's nice that even with all these issues, even with all the problems, um, it's a lot more good than bad with the Baltimore Ravens, especially with them sitting at five and two. These guys have won five games in a row. That's a lot. That's tough to do. Five games in a row in the NFL, that is almost impossible, especially when you look at the people who they've gone up against. Ravens are a tough team. They are a real team. They are a true contender. They really are. Uh, they still got stuff that they need to work on. They got a lot of stuff that they need to tighten up. But the fact that they've been on the right side of winning more than the wrong side, that says a lot. Team Keep It Clean, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video because it helps out a ton. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Again, special shout out to all the Baltimore Ravens fans who are out there in Tampa holding it down for all of us. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all and glad that y'all get to go home smiling.